Hello, everyone. It's me again. Uh, and once again, I'm here with Kelly. Uh, not really. Kelly's not going to be in for this one. Uh, I'm filling in for Jeremy today. And uh, we're going to get to talk Modern Horizons. And um, if you watched, yesterday was Wednesday. If you watched yesterday, sh no, yesterday was not Wednesday. Yesterday was like, what, Thursday? I'm, I'm, I don't know anything. I'm all messed up. Uh, anyway, but if you all watched our last uh, Wednesday stream, uh, me and Kelly really liked the Teamer, like, Planeswalker control deck that we saw. Um, and uh, I kind of want to get a start on it, uh, get the basis built for it so Kelly doesn't have as much work to do uh, when building the deck. So I think we're going to put a little bit of that together. But first and foremost, we are definitely going to be talking about Modern Horizons and some of the cards uh, either I think is going to see ban or I want banned. Uh, because I don't know if you know it or not, Modern Horizons is broken. The first one was really dumb. It was really stupid and broken. Um, this one is t that twice over. Um, they increased the power of Modern exponentially um, with this set. So uh, let's just go ahead and get into it. And I'll show you what we've got going on. Oh, my screen's black. So, there's that. Oh, here we go. Um, so, we're going to start off by looking at the white cards. Um, I don't think that there's anything exponentially strong in white um, this time around, which is really weird. Um, all the other colors saw a jump or saw legacy light cards printed. So, like, black has a hymn to Torok essentially now um green has like guy's cradle esper sentinel disagrees with you uh hogak was not fine hogak was everything that was wrong um but if we just keep on looking through here we see a lot of artifacts this time around um modular is back they've started reprinting things with modular again and it's really cool to see that uh, mainly because the artifact deck, um, the Mox Opal ban, uh, Mox Opal ban uh, destroyed Affinity, um, uh, destroyed a lot of the um, Hardened Scales decks. Um, so seeing like Modular come in and try and put some life back into those decks is nice. Um, <laughs> but um, nothing super broken out of white yet. Um, uh let's see we've got we've got a couple really cool cards like fairgrounds patrol i think is a really cool common card um it can recycle itself so like popper can play it um things like nykthos paragon uh whenever you gain life you may put that many plus one plus one encounters on each creature you control you only get to do it once per turn but it goes on each creature you control um, then right next to it, um, out of time. When out of time enters the battlefield, untap all creatures, then phase them out until uh, it leaves the battlefield. Put a time counter uh, on each creature that's phased out this way, and it has vanishing. At the beginning of your upkeep, remove a time counter from it, uh, from this enchantment. When the last is removed, sacrifice it. Uh, I think it's a really good way to uh, get things off the board that you don't normally have a way uh, to out some stuff. Um, so out of time is really good. I don't think it's like super busted or anything, but it is all right. Um, yeah, somebody, uh, Panda just mentioned resurgent belief and that's the next one I'm going to, uh, suspend is back and suspend is wild. Um, some interactions with suspend, um, Teferi the time raveler is in modern. Teferi says you can only cast things at sorcery speed for your opponents. Um, suspend comes off during your standby phase. You can't cast sorcery spells in your standby phase. So when things come off suspend during the standby phase, uh, if Teferi's on board, they'll go straight to the graveyard because they get countered. Um, so putting stuff on suspend and then slapping a Teferi down kind of really sucks uh, for your opponent if they don't get to play. Um, so Resurgent Belief uh, is suspend two. Um, so it's suspended for two turns. It has white and one. Uh, return all enchantments cards you control from your graveyard to the battlefield. Um, there is a green-white, like, uh, ghostly prison, like, stall deck that just plays a lot of enchantment. Enchantments plays, like, Starfield of Nyx um, and a bunch of other enchantments. So, like, it's a way to just recycle all of those. Um, there's one that says whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield, create a 4-4. So, like, 
Resurgent Belief just dumps them all into the battlefield, and you just make a bunch of 4-4s. Four it's really good. Um, <coughs> uh, Search the Premises is really good for Commander. Um, but as we're seeing here, like, White just doesn't have anything that I think is going to be, um, like, super on the line to get banned. Um, they made Timeless Dragon. It's pretty cool. Nothing super big. Um, yeah, no. There uh, wasn't really uh, a lot going on um, for for White this time around. And I just lost my mouse. I don't know where it went. Um, so we'll just move on to the next color. My mouse is gone again. Somebody's doing something. Okay, it's back. Uh, we'll move over to blue. Um, dress down, I think, shouldn't be at rare. No one is doing nothing. Um, dress down says flash. Whenever it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Creatures lose all abilities at the beginning of the instep sacrifice dress down. Um, I think this card's really good. Um, but it's not super, super powerful. It is a way to just, like, if your opponent just has, like, a board of creatures that just all do a lot of stuff. So, like, humans, like, all their creatures do a lot of things. Or taxes, like, all their creatures do a lot of things. You, you, if you flash this in, they lose all those abilities, and then you're just free to uh, go on and play your turn. Um, keep going on. Uh, Fractured Sanity. For three blue, each opponent mills 14 cards, and it has cycling. Um, it says whenever you sacri uh, whenever you cycle Fractured Sanity, each opponent mills four cards. So for three mana, you can mill them for 14. That's insane. So like in the mono blue decks, uh, the mono blue mill decks, um, you'll go play a fetch land, fetch, go um, go get whatever land that you want and get set up. But you pass to your your opponent. If your opponent fetches or search their library in any way, you activate a card called Archive Trap. Archive Trap says if your opponent search their library this turn, mill them for 13. This is already a problem because uh, it hits one more, and it also can mill when it's cycled. Um, so I do see, like, Fractured Sanity could be one of the cards. Like, it's on one that I'm just like, okay, this card's kind of stupid, shouldn't be here. Um, so I do see Fractured Sanity uh, being a little bit problematic. Um, Inevitable Trail, um, another Suspend card. All of the Suspend cards seem to be kind of busted on their surface. Um, search target opponent's library for a creature card and put that card onto the battlefield under you under your control. That player shuffles. Well, that's really stupid. Um, but I think that it is kind of, you know, checked. You have to have three mana to play it then it has to stay in suspend for three turns. I, it's just not fast enough, in my opinion. Modern's a very fast format. Now, in Commander, that card's kind of gross. Uh, card's kind of stonks in Commander, but in uh, Modern, I just don't see it having that much, uh, uh, that much play. Uh, Lucid Dreams, uh, it's a good card. Draw X cards, where X is the number of creature types uh, among cards in your graveyard. It's, it's all right. I think it's just too highly costed. Um... Murktide Regent. Um, it has Delve. If we've learned anything about Delve, uh, Delve is like one of the most broken mechanics that the game's ever seen. This card has Flying. When it enters the battlefield, it enters with a plus one, plus one on it for each instant and sorcery card exiled with it. Whenever an instant sorcery leaves your graveyard, put a plus one, plus one on Murktide Regent. Um, the... Uh, the Is It Prowess deck um, and the Is It and the Is It Phoenix decks, um, they kind of fell off in favor when they lost um, Faithless Looting, and they didn't have a way to fill up their graveyard. This is another top end for them. If they wanted to trim some things and just play mainly uh, instants and sorceries, which they were already doing, they just have another threat that's just basically two mana. I don't think there's ever a point in which they don't have five sorceries in their graveyard by the end of turn two or three uh, because Ops a thing, Serum Vision's a thing, Faithless Looting was a thing, cards that make you discard cards are a thing. Um, I do see like anything that has Delve strapped on it, like look at Hogak, uh, um, are very dangerous. So I could see Murktide Regent 
at some point being super busted or seeing a lot of competitive play, but I don't think it would be anything banned. So, uh, Rashad and Dark Hand, uh, Dark Hand, uh, it has Island Walk, so it can attack your opponent directly if they have an island. Pay one, tap it, tap a land. Uh, this card's really good. Um, it's really good in uh, taxes decks. Um, where you're already constricting your opponent's mana. Um, this allows you to tap down lands um, against, like, your opponent or whatever. Uh, you can tap down the lands that they have to in, like, standby phase. Like, if you're playing Tron, tap one of their Tron lands during standby phase. If they try and float the mana, they're just going to lose it when they go to the next phase. So, like, it helps, like, kind of curve how much Tron's able to do on their turn. Um, yeah, Rashad and Port on a stick's kind of insane. Um, there's a lot of squirrels in this, so when we get to green, you'll see them. Um, but there's a civilian of sea and sky. Um, as it has in indestructible as long as you control at least two other merfolk. Whenever it attacks, draws a card. Whenever uh, other merfolk you control have ward one. Um, whenever another merfolk you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, counter it unless that player pays one. Um, and it's a 3-4. Merfolk is known for having three to four, you know, uh, like, lords on the field that give all other merfolk plus one, plus one. Uh, not to mention the fact that they're playing um, uh, an artifact that allows them to just tap it and put a creature into play. Um, this card's really good. And if merfolk doesn't do anything, um, then, like, it doesn't do anything, but I think Civellium of Sea and Sky can really bring that deck into competitive play. I really do think so. Um, Panda says, Thought Monitor is busted. 10,000% bringing back Affinity. Uh, what color is Thought Monitor? And I'll look at it. Did I already pass it? Um, let's see. Oh, there it is. Uh, Thought Monitor, six and a blue, affinity for artifacts. So it costs one less for each artifact you control. Flying. Whenever it enters the battlefield, draw two cards. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of really good. Uh, kind of really good. Um, but the one that I'm most excited before, uh, for is right below it, Counterspell. I think this is a mistake. I don't think Counterspell is ready to be in modern. I don't think so. Um, not only did you just give, um, the control decks, like, an efficient answer for anything, um, you also gave, um, you know, other decks that just splash blue. Um, so, like, there's, uh, the, there's, like, Esper decks that float around, um, there's the, uh, Death Shadow list that play a lot of blue, and so them having an efficient answer now that, only cost double blue. Uh, that's kind of insane. Um, control decks just got a lot better. Um, just got control was already one of the better control decks. Um, when you looked in the scope of just control decks, um, now just got doesn't have to play these terrible counter spells. They can just play four counter spell and four cryptic command, and they're 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 loaded. Yeah, I don't think uh, Harake. I really don't think counter spell is ready to come back. I just don't. Uh, let's see. However, you can't avoid the fact that Thought Monitor is brilliant for uh, Mono Blue uh, Monarch Affinity. I mean, it's good. Uh, you can play it in Mono Blue Tron. There was a Mono Blue Tron list that played a lot of artifacts. It's just a way to just refill your hand because you're playing like Mind Slaver. Um, you're playing like the you're playing some of the artifact lands. Um, you're playing Karn. You're playing these just like uh chromatic star chromatic prism these kind of things so like thought monitor is really good for that deck um upheaval uh six mana return all permanents to their owner's hands not that good wonder um as long as it's in your graveyard and you control an island creatures you control have flying not really that good we saw like uh there definitely was a power jump from white to blue uh but we're definitely getting ready to see um more of that power come through. So, out of blue, I don't think that, uh, really don't think Counterspell is ready to come back. And I wouldn't be surprised if Counterspell bots the bullet at some point. I really don't. 
Um, we'll move on to black. And we'll just start up here with uh, Archon of Cruelty. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, target opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker, discards a card, and loses three life. You draw a card and gain three life. Um, eight mana, not too much. Um, Wonder is okay for uh, Demir Delver. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. Grixis Delver, even. Um, trying to see if, if there's anything else. Uh, ch -ch 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 <laughs> Damn. Uh, that's not me cursing. There's an actual card called Dam. Uh, two black. Destroy a target creature. A creature destroyed this way can't be uh, regenerated. It has overload for two white white. So you can pay two black, two white, and two uh, to destroy all creatures, and they can't be regenerated. So it's a black, white, board white. That, uh, it, yeah, it's, strictly, it's a strictly better wrath. Um, it basically says for two extra mana, um, things can't be regenerated, which is insane, by the way. Um, right next to it, uh, Dothy Voidwalker. Uh, it has shadow. This creature can attack or be blocked by only creatures with shadow. Um, if a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, instead exile it and put a void counter on it. You can tap Dothy. To sacrifice it, choose an exile card an opponent owns with a void counter on it. You may play it this turn without paying its mana cost. This thing comes on comes down on turn two. It's a three two, so its its body's already good. Like it's it can get in damage. It can yeah no. Uh, this is insane, especially if you pair it with like someone just said the ley lines. Um, that way anything they send to the graveyard is automatically exiled, and it's going to get a counter on it. It's it's a ley line on a body, and you get to cast other things with it. It's Dothy Voidwalker probably could hit uh, could be hit on the ban list at some time. Yeah, yeah, you don't you don't even need it. It has ley line built in. You're right. Um, moving on. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Echoing returns, okay. Like, it's a good common. I think it could see some popper play. Um, but there is one card I'm waiting to get to here. Um, Grief is okay. It has Menace. Whenever it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals their hand. Um, you choose an online card from it and discard that card. Evoke. Um, exile a black card from your hand. So you can play it for free just by discarding a black card. Um, seems all right. Turn one, get a 3-2. Um, there's a black Tarmogoyf now, Necrogoyf. Um, its power is equal to the number of creatures in all graveyards. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player discards a card. It has Madness. I don't know if you guys know about a deck called, uh, I, I can't even think about it now. Dredge. Um, this card's really good. When Dredge gets to five mana, they just play this thing. They've already they're they're loading up their graveyard anyway. Grief is really good. You're right. Uh, grief is insane. But Necrogoyf is really cool. I could see it in some fringe Jun decks, some stuff like that. Um, Magus of the Bridge. Whenever an, a non-token creature is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, create a two-two uh, black zombie creature token. Whenever a creature is put into an opponent's graveyard from the battlefield, exile Magus of the Bridge. Um, so there's a card uh, that got banned because of Hogak. Um, that was some named something bridge. This is that card on a stick. So um, we've we've seen a lot of stuff uh, get reprinted, like older cards get reprinted on bodies, and it's really good. This is a three drop four four that makes two twos. It's really good. Allows you to go off on your turn, throw a bunch of stuff into your graveyard, make a bunch of tokens, and then on your opponent's turn, if something goes to the graveyard. Whoop de doo, you just lost Magus at the bridge. That's fine. You don't care. You've already made these tokens. Um, persist. Return target non legendary creature uh, card from your graveyard to the battlefield with a minus one, minus one counter on it. That is really good. It's really good. It, it doesn't matter if it's got the minus one, minus one. Uh, it makes uh, two twos. It does make two twos. You are correct. <laughs> um, profane tutor. Here we go with tutors. Um, search your library for a card and put that card into your hand. Shuffle. 
It's got suspend for black and one. Um, one thing that's really key to know about all these suspend cards, there's currently a card in modern um, called As Foretold. It gets a counter and allows you to play cards with uh, CMC of that from your hand for free. It casts this for free. It allows you to play it on your next turn, cast Propane, Profane Tutor uh, for free. Propane Tutor. Um, yeah, so anything with Suspend, I think, is going to bust as foretold. So I think because of how uh, the power level in, in this set is, as foretold can get hit. I think as foretold may be a card that gets hit because of this set. It's not out of this set, but because of the cards that are in this set, I can definitely see as foretold getting hit on the ban list. Um, Sudden Edict is a uh, uh, is an edict for free uh, with split second. Split second says you can't respond to it, so you can't put anything on the stack. Or if your opponent gets the stack played in some way and they have priority, they'll just sudden edict and you can't respond. The stack starts to resolve. Um, so I think sudden edict is really good and it's a common. Um, so those who are playing um, those who are playing the rack deck, rejoice. Sudden edict's really good. Um, but the one I think that's probably going to eat a ban 110% is Torok Dread Cantor. Um, so there's a card that I have uh, advocated never to come into modern, and it's called Him to Torok. Him to Torok, your opponent discards two cards from their hand at random. Um, there's a reason why they don't put at random on a lot of cards, um, just because it allows too much RNG to be into the game, and it just it just causes like really blowout scenarios where your opponent only has four cards in their hand and they need two of them. Him to Torok could just hit both of those and render your opponent's hand unplayable. Well, Torok Dread Cantor is Him to Torok on a body. Um, it has Kicker of Black Black, um, Protection from White. So you can't Path to Exile, you can't, uh, you can't block it with a white creature, you can't do anything like that, untouched by white. Whenever an opponent discards a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, an opponent discards two cards at random. So for four mana, you will make them discard two random cards from their hand, and this becomes a 4-3 with protection from white. That is busted, and I... Th yeah, you can't Swords to Plowshares it, you can't Path to Exile, you can't block it with a white creature. This card's just too good. Definitely, definitely gets hit. I, I really honestly think that it does. Um, so we've got Counterspell, we've got As Foretold getting banned because of the set's too powerful, and we've got Torok Dread Cantor. Um, there's Tragic Fall, um, which is just tragic slip, but with hellbent. Um, target creature gets minus 13, minus 13 until end of turn if you have no cards in hand. Otherwise, it gets minus 3, minus 3. I think it's okay. It's a really good common slated removal spell. Unmarked Grave. Search your library for a non-legend creature um, and put it into your graveyard and then shuffle. Um, it's a really good way to just put stuff into your graveyard. Um, there's a lot of shenanigans that you can do with it with looping certain cards out of your graveyard. I think that's kind of good. Um, let's see. Braids Cabal Minion got printed into Modern. It's now Modern Legal. It says at the beginning of each player's upkeep that a, that player sacrifices an artifact, creature, or land. If you're playing the uh, Mono Black discard deck, um, the rack, you can... Eight rack. You can just play Braids as your curve topper, like you're playing Liliana of the Veil at three, Braids at four. So if you go... Um, if you go discard spell turn one, the enchantment that makes them lose a life, uh, the rack, Liliana, and then Braids. I don't think they're I don't think that they're winning that game. Braids is just too good. Braids really good, and it's banned in Commander for a reason. Um, so bringing in a banned card from another format and putting it into this one, I don't know how much that does. Um, Patriarch's bidding. Each player chooses a creature type. Each player returns all cards of a type chosen from this way from the graveyard to the battlefield. That's really good. Um, I do think that there are uh, some instances where that's really good. Um, but otherwise, it's just really good in Commander. Now, there is one here, Scourge Familiar. 
Uh, I mentioned uh, during the last stream that I was on that I, I, I got to watch a Modern Horizons uh, like pre-release. Scourge Familiar is insane. You can discard a card that has madness to make one black mana. You make the black mana, then you can cast that same card you just discarded if it has madness. This card's insane. You can discard three cards, make three black mana, and then cast all of them if you can pay black mana for them. Um, it just enables, like, it just frees up and um, produces just a little bit of mana for you to play um, your your madness cards with. So I think that's that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, no, we just uh, just got done with black. We'll go to red. Uh, here we see a lot more of the modular cards, which is fair. I think red um, tends to have a lot more of these artifact creatures, um, as does white. Um, I don't think any of them are super, super busted or going to do something. Um, I think they're all right for uh, for what they're doing. Um, Brea's Apprentice is really good. When it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one, uh, colorless thopter. Um, you can tap it, sacrifice an artifact to choose one. Exile the top card of your library until the end of the turn. You may play that card. So if it's a land, you just get to play it. Um, or target creature gets plus 2, plus 0 until end of turn. I think it's okay. I think it's a way to... Um, use the modular uh, cards as a way to uh, just make things uh, bigger. So it's all right. Um, calibrated Blast. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-lane card. Put the revealed cards on the bottom of your library in a random order. When you reveal a non-lane card this way, it deals damage equal to that card's mana, co mana value to any target. Um... I don't know if you guys have ever heard of a deck called Ad Nauseam, but Ad Nauseam took a hit uh, due to uh, Simeon Spirit Guide getting banned. Um, this is just another win con for, um, for Ad Nauseam. It's a way for, if they produce three red mana, they can play no lands, they just play artifacts, and you're dead. They're just going to kill you just by casting Calibrated Blast. And that's what's happening. Uh, so Ad Nauseam got a new card. Um, Captain Ripley Vance, I think it's okay. Um, whenever you cast your third spell each turn, put a plus one, plus one on it, then it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Um, it is kind of centered around having to play uh, a lot of spells per turn. Um, but outside of that, I just, it's, it's okay. It's pretty cute in Commander. I see somebody in the chat saying Dragon Rage is Chandler. Um, for one red mana, you get a one, one. It's fine. Uh, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Surveil 1. I think this may be the first red card with Surveil on it. Um, look at the top card of your library, and you may put that into your graveyard if you choose. It has Delirium. As long as there are four more card types uh, among cards in your graveyard, it gets plus two, plus two, flying, and has to attack each turn in Fable. Card's really good. Um, I think it can... Uh, yeah, it's the first non demir card... Uh, to have surveil. Um, so I think like Dragon Rage's Chandler can pop up somewhere. Uh, it may pop up in like prowess decks, um, but I'm I'm not sure yet. I, I just don't know if it has a home yet. Um, Fury, Fury's okay. Uh, Glimpse of Tomorrow, another thing that you can get off as for Tom. So, Glimpse of Tomorrow, shuffle all permanents you own into your library, reveal that many cards from the top of your library, put all non-aura enchantment cards revealed this way onto the battlefield, then do the same for aura cards, then put the rest on the bottom. So, as foretold, tends to play uh, a couple of enchantments, a few creatures or whatever. Um, so, Glimpse of Tomorrow can, like, just filter through the deck just a little bit. Uh, it's great for tokens decks. If you're playing token decks, you just throw your tokens away and just get the value straight out of the deck. Um, so it's all right. Uh, Harmonic Prodigy. Uh, Prodigy. Uh, it has prowess for two drop. Um, if an ability of a shaman or another wizard you control triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. Um, the Blue-Red Wizards deck just got an upgrade. Um, I think that it's okay. There are some really good wizards that just haven't had um, a chance to shine. Um, there is one that's really prelevant. His name is uh, Snapcaster Mage. 
Harmonic Prodigy lets that happen again. So you can flash and snap Caster Mage, target one card in your graveyard. Prodigy causes it to trigger again. You get to target another card in your graveyard, and you get to cast them this turn. It's kind of insane. Kind of insane. Uh, Obsidian Charmaw. Um, this card costs one less to cast for each land your opponent's control that would produce colorless. Um, when it enters the battlefield, destroy target non-basic land and opponent controls. I think that it's primarily really good um, when Tron is a, the best deck in the format. Um, but outside of that, like it just doesn't see a lot. It just really doesn't. Um, so like only if Tron is the best deck in the format would I think that this card um, is more playable than what it is now. Uh, let's see. Uh, I know there's one more coming up. Uh, we haven't got to it yet. Um, Imperial Recruiter. This card's nuts. Um, <laughs> when it enters the battlefield, search your library for a creature with power two or less, reveal it, and put it in your hand. It's it's just really good. Uh, red um, has a lot of color, uh, a lot of creatures that are super low uh, in terms of power. Like it can grab you, Soul Scar Mage, Monastery Swiss Spear, and just on and on. Like you, uh, Goblin God, um, you can just keep going with all these red creatures that are super powerful and you can just go and get them off imperial recruiter and they don't even have to be red so if you're playing something that's like red black or jund or any color any color combination imperial recruiter is just a way to filter through and add it um there is one more i uh, know i passed by it mind collapse uh for the mono red burn decks the boros burn decks the any blitz deck if it's your turn you may sacrifice a mountain then pay this mana cost it deals five damage to target creature or player that's all right it's a, another way to trigger prowess um it's another way to deal five damage to a creature and you're not having to play lightning axe so you don't have to worry about discarding it uh the monkey rafagon <sighs> ragavan's not that good is it um when it deals the combat damage to a player create a treasure token uh, and exile the top card of that player's library. Until the end of turn, you may cast that card. Dash. You may cast this card's mana cost um, for its dash cost, and if you do, it gains haste and is run turned from the battlefield to the ha owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. I think it's cool. I think it's all right. But it's a 2-1, um, and, like, you can play it on turn one, and that's good, but, like, I don't... Dashing it just seems really bad. Um, I think that if it was... Um, like, if its power and toughness were a little bit different, I think it would be more playable. But, like, I think it's really good in Commander. I don't know if it breaks Modern by any uh, any, any degree, but... Um, yeah, but no, like, there's just not a lot happening here yet that's going to get banned. Not in Red, anyway. Uh, but there are a lot of really strong cards from Red. Uh, going to Green... Ave Progenitor of Ooze. It has Storm, so you get to copy it for each uh, spell cast this way. Um, Ave Progenitor of Ooze isn't a legendary creature if it's a token. Ave enters the battlefield about, uh, with a plus one, plus one on it for each other Ooze you control. So, let's say four spells have been cast, and you cast Eve, which is five. So when you cast Ave, it becomes five. You get to put five tokens onto the battlefield of Ave. So they're all getting plus six, plus six, which makes them all eight eights. For f five mana, if four spells have been cast before. Just say it. green is all busted and skip the color. Yeah, I can do that. Abundant Harvest. Um, just another way to um, or like filter through your deck. Um, Chatterfang, the Squirrel General. Squirrels finally get a general for commander. Um, it's, it's okay. Um, it is green-black, so you can sacrifice X squirrels um, and target creature gets plus X minus X. Um, if one or more tokens will be created under your control, they gain... Uh, those tokens plus that many 1-1 one, one uh, squirrel creature tokens. It's kind of stonks. 
Um, endurance. Endurance is really good. Um, flash reach. Whenever it enters the battlefield, target up to one target player puts all the cards from their graveyard on the bottom of their library in a random order. Uh, you can cast it for evoke by exiling a Greek card from your hand. Yeah, no, look, this is all really good. Um, we'll keep going. Gaia's Will. Is there any more reason to see why, as foretold, is probably going to get banned? Not to mention from the first Modern Horizons set, there was a uh, Crash of Rhinos. Whenever you cast it, you make four. You either make three four fours or four three three Rhino tokens. Yeah, no, like green's just too good. They just keep power creeping green, and I'm I'm tired of it. I'm I'm honestly kind of sick. Um, guys, Will says until the end of the turn, you may play cards and cast spells from your graveyard. It gives everything flashback. It gives your lands flashback. If a card would be put from your graveyard anywhere this turn, exile it instead. It doesn't matter because you're going to play it all out of your graveyard anyway. This is kind of, kind of a problem. So, like, this card, Guy's Will is probably going to get banned, if not as foretold is. Um, Ignoble Hierarch. Uh, not ban-worthy, but you have to talk about it. We already have Noble Hierarch. Now we have Ignoble Hierarch. Um, this one taps for the Jund colors. Jund really needed another one-mana creature to play. They were playing Noble Hierarch just to tap for green. Now they get to play this, and it taps for red, black, or green. Um... Shout out to my boy, JT. Um, there's a Frog Samurai in this set. Um, it's got Bashudo too. It's not very good, but uh, shout out to JT because we love him. Um, keep going through here. Um, Sanctum Weaver. It taps to make X, like X amount of mana of any one color um, for all the enchantments that you control. Uh, seems decent. Um, there's a lot of more squirrels, uh, squirrel flavored stuff. Um, timeless, timeless witness. Let's talk about this card for a second. When it enters the battlefield, return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay. We already have eternal witness that does that, but for three mana. This one has eternalize. So you get to cast it again out of your graveyard later. Only that it becomes a four, four black zombie, um, in addition. Timeless Witness is really good. I don't think that it's uh, super broken or anything, but I do think that that card is extremely good and can see play in certain decks. Um, right next to it, Thrasta Tempest War 10. Green, green. It costs three less to cast for each other spell you've cast this turn. So, if you're playing a lot of spells, it costs less. It has Trample and Haste, and it has Trample over Planeswalkers. This is the first time we've ever seen this. Trample over Planeswalkers means if it's a 7-7 and a Planeswalker has 3 loyalty on it, it's going to smash through and hit the player for 4. It's really good. Um, this card has Hexproof as long as it entered the battlefield this turn. So it's got Hexproof for the first turn. Uh, not Did I mention that it has Haste? Trample on Haste and Hexproof. Uh, first turn for a 12 drop that can cost less is kind of kind of insane. Um, you've got Tireless Provisioner. Uh, it's another uh, Tireless Tracker. Um, it just it's with landfall rather than when a land is uh, enters the battlefield. Um, tireless Tracker is just a little bit different, but I think that they work in tandem with each other. Um, seems like it could be okay. We've got a command, Verdant Command, Target Player creates two tapped 1-1 one, one squirrel creature tokens. It can counter the loyalty ability of a Planeswalker, exile a card from a graveyard, or target player gains three life. Uh, Verdict Command's insane. I think that it's really good. I think that it's going to be a sideboard staple in some green decks um, as a way to combat some of the Planeswalkers that we've got coming out in this set. Um, let's see, what else we got? We got another Hydra. Hydras are good. Um, Enchantress Presence, um, another way that these enchantment decks are just going to have another way to filter through their deck. Um, we're seeing another commander reprint, Titana 
uh, Protector of Argoth. Um, yeah, it's insane for elves. You're completely right. Elves and Merfolk getting boosted in this set. Squirrels even getting boosted in this set. So a lot of tribal stuff coming out. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, return target land uh, card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's untapped. Unless it enters tapped, but it can return it untapped. Um, whenever a land you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a 5-3 green elemental creature token. You get to play fetch lands in modern. Most elves decks ran four black green fetch land, four red green fetch land, four green white fetch land, four blue green fetch land, and then just played a number of basics. That's four, twelve, sixteen. I mean, they didn't play that many fetch lands, but still, the ability to have this many fetch lands and make five green elementals. Five, three green elementals. It's kind of insane. Fabled Passage 2 is another fetch land that decks can play. It's kind of a problem. I uh, don't know if it eats a ban or anything just because she's so high-costed, but it could be a problem. Um, Yavi Maya, Elder. Uh, you may search your library for two basic land cards when it dies. Reveal them, put them in your hand, shuffle. You can pay two to sack it and draw a card. It's good. Uh, it's it's all right. Um, so green has green has guys. Well, we haven't even got to the lands yet. Um, but yeah, no, there's 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 a little bit of a problem that we're starting to see with this set. Uh, the power level is just all over the place. Multi colored. This stupid thing. I don't like it too much. Um, it's all right. I don't think that's super good. Um, yeah, a lot, of, uh, a lot of people have called it either A or Asmore or whatever. I think that it's really cute. It was in a book. Um, it's been written about once, so like they made it into a card. I just don't think that it's like super modern playable, but it's all right. Um, let's see. A lot of uh, Karth the Lion, he's kind of cool. When he enters the battlefield uh, or a Planeswalker you control dies, look at the top seven cards of your library. You may reveal a Planeswalker card from among them and put them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. <laughs> Planeswalker's loyalty abilities, you have activate cost with an additional plus one to activate. Yeah, so when you plus one a Planeswalker, if Karth's on field, it's getting plus two instead of plus one. There's a lot of flavor text from that cooking book for demons. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, we've got Chrome Carrier, Combined Chrysalis, some other stuff. But Dakon, Shadow Slayer, is now a Planeswalker. Um, it's Esper. It costs blue, white, and black. Um, it enters the battlefield with a number of loyalty counters on it equal to the number of lands you control. So the longer the game goes on, the more loyalty counters he's going to come in with. Um, he can plus one to surveil two, minus three, exile a creature, or minus six, put an artifact from your hand or graveyard onto the battlefield. I think he's decent. I think he's a like a filtering planeswalker for the Esper decks. I don't think that they're ever going to use the artifact part, but they could. Um, I think somewhere there's like an Esper deck that's going to go around. Um, that's going to play like Time Sieve, um, uh, Time Sieve, Thopter Foundry, Urza, and Dakon. And they're either going to take infinite turns, they're going to make infinite Thopters and hit you, they're going to gain infinite life. Um, Dakon allows them to just put stuff onto the battlefield, um, allows them to save their mana, a lot of other things. Um, Combine Chrysalis, Blue, Green, Creature Tokens you control have flying, okay. Two, green, blue, sacrifice a token, create a 4-4 four, four green beast. It's kind of stonks. Um, kind of really good that it's a common level and it's costed it too. That it's actually kind of okay. Um, Garth the One-Eye cost a Wooberg, so it costs one of every color. He can tap, choose a name that hasn't been chosen from among disenchant. Brain Geyser, Terror, Shivan Dragon, and Black Lotus. 
create a copy of one of those. You play Garth, you tap him, you make a Black Lotus. This is a way for the Black Lotus to be in modern. Um, I don't know of any five-color decks that are going around right now that can make use of Garth, but I know for a fact that there will be one. Um, Garth is going to... Um, yeah, no. Uh, I suffered from someone that ephemerated Garth and put 16 Shivan Dragons with an anointed procession. Oh boy, that sounds like it sucked. Uh, but yeah, no, Garth has the ability to just make a bunch of tokens. And there's a lot of things that say um, when a token comes into play, create a, another token that's a copy of that one. So you can just make a bunch of Black Lotuses and just tap them all for mana. It's kind of insane. Um, we've got a Foundry Helix, which is just a little bit worse Lightning Helix. I mean, it costs three mana, um, and... As an additional cost, you have to sacrifice a permanent, but it hits something for four. Um, and if you sacrifice an artifact, you gain four, so it's worse, but it's all right. Uh, General Ferris Rockerick. Um, he's a three drop, three one with hex proof for monocolored cards. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, create a four four red white golem artifact creature token. Seems kind of insane now that we have. Um, a card we haven't talked to, but I know it's coming up. Shardless Agent. That card's, card's really good. And I think it may be one of the next ones. I know it's at the bottom, but here we've got Gaia Drone uh, Dihada. Uh, protection for permanence with corruption counters. Plus one, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Put a corruption counter on it and up to one other target creature or planeswalker. Gain control of a target permanent or planeswalker until the end of turn. Untap it and put a corruption counter on it. Gain taste until end of turn. Or minus seven green. Uh, gain control of all permanents with corruption counters on them. So, like, it can't take your lands, which sucks. But if it was able to put corruption counters on lands, I'd say that this card could eat a ban at some point. Um, I really do think it could. Uh... Goblin, a narc, uh, onark, omancer. There was already a green, uh, a red green goblin, like infinite mana deck. Um, this is just their goblin electromancer. Um, it costs makes things that cost red and green cost one less. Now they're just going to be able to play a bunch of one drops. Now, um, I think that the card's really good. Uh, next, we've got Grist, Hunger of Tide. Uh, Grist, Hunger of Tide, isn't on the battlefield, so if it's not on the battlefield, it's a 1-1 one, one insect creature in addition to other types. Plus one, create a 1-1 one, one black green insect creature token. Then mill a card. If it's an insect card milled this way, put a loyalty counter on Grist and repeat this process. If you make a 1-1 one, one and you mill a card and that card is Grist, Grist is an insect because it was in the deck and now in the graveyard. It triggers Grist that's on the battlefield and allows you to mill again. So you get to make a 1-1. One, one, you get to mill a card. And if you just keep hitting Grists, you're going to keep on going. Um, Cryptozoologist, really good for um, really good for Commander. Um... Piru, the Volatile, good for Commander. I uh, don't think it sees any uh, competitive modern play, just because it's 2, 4, 6, 8. Um, Master of Death could be somewhere. Um, when it enters the battlefield, surveil 2. At the beginning of your upkeep, if it's in your graveyard, you may pay 1 life and return it to your hand. I think that that's okay. Um, keep going on here. Not a lot happening. Um... Chainer Nightmare Adept is now in Modern. Uh, it got printed in a Commander product, and now it's Modern Legal. Um, you can discard a card to cast a creature spell from your graveyard. You can only activate this once per turn. Um, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if you didn't cast it from your hand, it gains haste. Sounds really good. It sounds okay. Um, keep on going. Shardless Agent. 
Uh, I do think the Charlotte's agent's going to get banned, or it's going to get Blood Braid Elf banned again. Um, Blood, Blood Braid Elf was banned because Cascade is too powerful. Uh, we allowed Blood Braid Elf to come back in and Jace the Mind Sculptor to come in at the same time. Um, none of them really done anything, but I do think that Shardless Agent is going to push that a little bit farther than what we expected the first time. Um, because you can go Shardless Agent into a Blood Braid Elf into something else. Uh, Shardless Agent is also another way for what were the Jun decks to play those mana dorks we mentioned earlier cast either a Charlotte's Agent or a Bloodbraid Elf and just go off. And, like, the Jun deck's going to do Jun things. You're going to be able to play, like, um, uh, Ren and Six, the, the Planeswalker commander that, like, uh, the Planeswalker that just gets um, land, lands out of your graveyard. Um, all kinds of other things. Uh, Vindicate is a really good card. I remember wishing this card would come into Modern. Um, it just destroys a permanent for three mana. It's one of the most effective answers for anything that the, the game's seen. Um, for a permanent. For three mana, just to, like, pop a land, Planeswalker, Enchantment, whatever. I think that that card's very, very good. Um, and right next to it, Sterling Grove. Other enchantments have shrouds, so you can't target enchantments for nothing. You can pay one, sacrifice it, search your library for an enchantment card, reveal it, put it on the top of the deck. Sounds okay. I think like what you're really going to be using it for is to just keep all your enchantments protected. Uh, next, uh, we can either do lands or colorless things yet. Uh, so it does look like it's going to take us to artifacts. Um, brainstone uh, at uncommon. One mana, tap it, and you brainstorm. I think that that's really good. Um... Cauldra Complete. Um, it's Living Weapon. Um, so Living Weapon, when it enters the battlefield, it makes a 0-0 zero, zero, uh, germ creature token and equips itself to that germ. Uh, equip creature gets plus 5, plus 5, and has First Strike, Trample, Indestructible, Haste, and whenever this creature is dealt combat damage uh, to a creature, exile that creature. You can Stoneforge Mystic this. It's a problem. Uh, Stoneforge Mystic did not need a reason to get banned again. And they keep printing cards that can do that. It will get it banned. Please stop doing that. I like Stoneforge Mystic. I want Stoneforge Mystic and Modern. But you can't keep printing these broken, stupid things. Um, Stone Hewer can, uh, Giant, yeah, you can just get it out. Um, Diamond Lion, which is a play on Lion's Eye Diamond, one of the strongest legacy cards. Um, you can discard your hand, sacrifice it, add three mana of any one color. Activate this only as an instant. That's really powerful. But the fact that it is a creature and it has to survive a turn kind of sucks. But if it does survive and gets back to your opponent's turn and they have a way to kill you, Diamond Line has just allowed them to kill you. It's all right. Um, there is one card in here, Soul's Talisman. Uh, suspend three. It's just Soul Ring in Modern. You can as foretold Soul Talisman, and you're just playing Soul Ring in Modern. That's not okay. That is not okay. Um, the more and more I look at this set, it seems like either the Suspend cards are going to get as foretold banned, or the Suspend cards themselves are going to get banned. Um, you have Scion of the Draco, which costs 12. Um, Domain, this card costs 2 less to cast for each basic land type among lands you control. So if you have all 5 basics, it costs 2. Um, each creature you control has Vigilance if it's white, Hexproof if it's blue, Lifelink if it's black, First Strike if it's red, and Trample if it's green. It's a 4-4 creature itself. It's alright. Really good in Commander. 5 color dragons, really good in Commander. Uh, can't, we've got our little lizard boy here. Uh, he's all right. Affinity for artifacts, and he has artifact land cycling. Um, so you can pay to discard him to go search for an artifact land. Guess what they printed this set? Artifact lands. It's really good. Oh, it's a common. So you can play it in popper. Uh, sword and hearth of home. 
So they printed another sword. They've been printing swords. They printed two swords in the last Modern Horizon set. I think that um, this is the last one because they've got Worn Peace, uh, Fire and Ice. They've got the red black one. They've got the white blue one. They've got the white green one, the green blue one. I think they have all the color combinations, if I'm not mistaken. If not, they're like two or three away. But this one says it gets plus two, plus two, and it's got protection from green and white. Um, whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, exile up to one target creature you own, then search your library for a basic land card, put both cards onto the battlefield under your control. You can blink your Stoneforge Mystic. There is now a sword that allows you to blink your Stoneforge Mystic over and over. Feast and Famine is a black and green one. It's arguably one of the best swords. Um, yeah, no. I honestly want to start playing Magic again. Like, in paper, in modern. So I can play Hearth and Home. I just want to play a Stoneforge Mystic deck. I don't care what it is, but I want to play one. Um, let's see. Tormod's Crypt Creep. Crypt Keeper is Tormod's Crypt on a Body. Um, the Underworld Cookbook. Uh, discard a card, create a food token. You can pay four, uh, sacrifice it, return target creature from your graveyard to your hand. I think it's pretty cool. It's all right. Um, Void Mirror. Whenever a player casts a spell, if no colored mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. I'm sorry if you're playing artifact decks. That really sucks. Uh, you have to have colored mana now. You don't just get to play them for free with colorless mana. I'm sorry. It, it really sucks. Um, you got Zabaz, the Glimmer Wasp. Um, it's got modular one. Uh, for one drop, it's zero, zero. Um, if a modular ability would trigger put to put one or more plus one, plus one counters on it, put that many plus one, plus one counters on it instead. Um, you can pay red, destroy target artifact you control, or white, and it gains flying until end of turn. Um, Nevenarl's Disc, printed into modern. Why? Tron didn't need it. Now they have it. It enters tapped. You can pay one, tap it, destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. The card did not need to be in modern. Did not need to be in modern. And then you've got like Zoran Orb, sacrifice the land to gain two life. It's all right. But like Nevenarl's Disc, the Sword, um, Soul's Talisman. Um, Nettle Cyst isn't that good, but it's okay. Uh, Monoskeleon, uh, Cauldra's Complete. A lot of really good stuff in this set. A lot of really good. Um, now, if we go to the lands. They reprinted the first Zendikar fetch land, so that's Arid Mesa, Marsh Flats, uh, Misty Rainforest, Verdant Catacombs, Scalding Tarn. Um, Ursa Saga, for whatever reason, is in here with the lands. I needed to point that out. Um, Urza Saga enters the battlefield, and it taps to add one colorless mana. Um, during the second chapter, it gains two tap it, create a zero, 0 construct with this creature has uh, gets plus one, plus one for each artifact you control. And on the third one, you can search your library for an artifact cost with command, converted mana cost, zero or one, and put it onto the battlefield. I hate how they changed converted mana cost to mana value, and they're still not using mana cost. They're using mana value. It makes me upset. Why do you keep doing that? Um... <laughs> Yavi my Cradle of Growth. Um, each land is a forest in addition to its other types. Stonks. You had to give uh you had to give like the um the Ponza decks and the um Green Titan decks. Yeah, no, like there are five decks currently in modern that use Yavi my Cradle of Growth. I don't know if this card gets banned. It doesn't do anything. Like it, it's it's not breaking the game. It's just making each land is a forest in addition to its other types. There are cards that hate on forest cards. It's like destroy all forest your opponent controls. You can drop Yavi Maya, cast it, rip all their lands because they're all forest now. Thanks. 
That's exactly what we needed. Um, Cabal Coffers. You can pay two to tap, add black for each swamp you control. It's really good. Um, I'm a little scared of Cabal Coffers. I do think that Cabal Coffers could lead to some really unhealthy stuff. Um, Mishra's Factory is fine. Riptide Laboratory is fine. Um, but overall, like that's all of Modern Horizons. Um, I do think that like my problem are Cabal Coffers, Yavi Maya, um, the Torok man. Um, I think like the sword itself isn't bad, but I think the living weapon artifact was really like a little super powerful. So like in all in all, there's like two, three cards tops, I think, out of Marauder Modern Horizons that will get banned. But I do think that Modern Horizons 2 is going to be the reason that As Foretold gets banned. As Foretold wasn't doing anything before. It's doing a lot now. And I really think that that sucks that those are going to go away. Um, but it is what it is. Um, so we have just about an hour left in the stream. Um, so one thing else that I wanted to do was I wanted to, uh, I'm going to go back to full screen here for a minute now that we're done with that. Um, I am going to get our arena pulled up so we can start building that, uh, teamer deck that me and Kelly really seemed to like the other day. Oh, it's not doing it. There we go. Um, but there was that, uh. Uh, that teamer deck that played like the um, Kazmina um, and the Rowan and Kinrith. Um, that deck was kind of insane. Urza Saga is the first to get banned. They said it. We didn't test it. They confirmed it on Twitter. Okay. I mean, all right. That makes makes everything a little bit easier for me. Um, also, don't know why it's taking Arena so long to load. I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, it says it's uh, MTGA Arena is not dot exe is not responding. I mean, after today, I wouldn't respond either. It's been a really long day. Ah, oh, I think we're doing it now. I think I fixed it. Yeah, we got it. We're just waiting on the server. Uh, so we need to go to decks. We need to create a new deck. So, uh, already we know that this card played main deck test of talents. Kelly, if you're in here, I'm sorry that we got test of talented. Now, I don't know how many it plays, but I know that it did play some. Get all these basic islands out of my face. Um, I need to, we need to filter by red, blue, green, not colorless green. We need to filter by collected, not collected, and we want lands. So we need to go through here, find the lands. We're going to be in here for a little bit. But if anybody can remind me some of the cards that it played so I can take those notes down um, and help get this thing built. I know it played Test of Talents. It played the Cycling Counterspell. Okay, what do they got here? Uh, don't think it played any of those. Saw it coming. It did play Saw it coming, so we do need those. Um... Uh, I think we can get away with playing some of these lands. Mainly going to be using them for green. It seemed like we need the green-blue one. Uh, Bark Channel Pathway. Uh, did it play Temple of uh, Crawling Barons? I have that one under colorless, so we'll get there. Uh, it played one Triome. I think we'll play like three. What's the other pathway? Um, 
we've got the the green one. We need the red blue one. The river glide pathway. Uh, so they were super heavy on blue. So like playing fours, uh, four of bark channel and four of uh, river glide and only two uh, timber. I think that seems all right. Personal order. What are you talking about? Uh, personal order. I'm working on finishing up my first commander deck. So I bought a bunch of cards. Let's go. Let's go. What's the commander? Uh, so we need to type in crawling. I know for a fact it showed them playing two, so I think we'll just put in two, and then we can filter the rest in with whatever else basics that we need. Um, I think it played Cultivate. So I need to get off the filter now. Okay. So we need Saw, It, Four, What's the cycling counter spell? Kali is insane. It's not cancel. It is cancel just with cycling, though. Let me just look in blue. Um, what else did they play? They play like Kazmina. They played the things to go, they played, uh, what's the, like, blue card draws a card and lessons? Searching cycle should narrow it down. Yeah, I'll just type in cycle. Um, counter... Target. So search counter target spell. Um, lofty denials, negates. It's not cancel. It's not convolute. It's neutralize. That's what it is. Uh, they had lessons. Um, what's the growth spiral but for four that draws two cards? What is that card? Because it was tearing us up. Oh, I need to have green selected. Now I get to go and do this all over again. Um, you search by multicolored. Top four. Okay. Um... Uh, I'm trying to see, like it's the it's the blue green one, because we've already passed it. Stonks, um, the blue greens. I see, like I don't know why it's not showing us. Where's the blue green stuff? Oh, it's Eureka moment. There's just so little of it that it, we were just passing right over it. Um, so we'll type in lesson, see what we find. Is it what? Try and guess? No? Okay. I don't know what that card is. I know it's a sorcery. Uh, I know it costs three mana. It's not solve the equation. 
I don't know where it is. There. I, I like this a lot better. We'll just start searching in blue. I think that's the best way to do it because it's not giving us anything. We need to have not collected filtered as well. Um, I know it's like a common. It's not good that they were playing it. See, like, I typed lesson and nothing came up. That's why I, like, really don't like this. Uh, it costs three mana. Oh, it's pop quiz. And we need to top in lessons, take that off. Um, what lessons were they playing? They were playing environmental sciences. They were playing the mascot exhibition. They were playing pest summonings. Select format. This is for standard. Um, what else they were, they were playing Casmina let's see we've got one I think we want like two or three Rowan uh, it was this one what else were they playing they were playing, so like the counterspell stuff. They were playing the lesson stuff. What else were they playing? Yeah, I'm not going to put them in the deck. I'm just putting it here so I have everything that I'm looking at. Um, oh, they were playing like that Quandrix guy, the little creature dude. I think they play like one or two of him. He wasn't very good. He didn't do anything for him. Uh, but they were playing him. Yeah, so I do think that me and Kelly definitely are going to put our own spin, spin on this. So I don't think it's going to be an exact list. But there are some things like, uh, like we'll probably play like two of them. They were playing Quandrix commands. I do remember that. Um, that reminds me we need the Quandrix land. Uh, what are the Quandra clans called? This deck's weird. Like, I don't know how they were able to get the game, but they did. I think it's, like, really based on, like, that that test of talents that they had for our Cultivates. They were also playing Cultivate. Cultivate's stupid. Cultivate's stupid. We'll play all the good ones, Kelly. Uh, so, pop quiz. Can you just, like, not drag those to the sideboard? That makes me upset. Yeah, I, I like the JP art. Um, so they weren't playing any fireballs, and I know that me and Kelly talked about possibly playing the fireball for us. So, I need to get off this filter, and... Exit off cultivate. So channel banefire. Yeah, so like channel fireball got its name because of channel and fireball. So channel was a green green. It got printed. And then fireball was red X. You can just deal a lot of damage that way. That was just one of the, uh, the super old combos. And that's how uh, channel fireball got its name. It is not in arena though. Uh Shh. 
trying to remember that card's mana cost. I think it was like X. I think it was like XXX red, maybe. Uh, yeah, it's crackle with power, right? Yeah. So like we play like one crackle with crackle with power. I think that's enough, but even then, like we'd have to up amount the amount of like red stuff that we're playing. So like we'd go back down here and we play like another crag ground pathway. Um we do have it covered there, but I do think that we want that. Yeah, not not electro dominance. Now it's like so, like, the deck's almost built. It's just, like, no, don't craft it yet, silly gooses. Uh, so, we'll, we'll extend the deck just a little bit more so we can look at it. Um, so, mascot exhibition goes in the sideboard. Environmental sciences go in the sideboard. The, what's the other one? Pest summonings go on the sideboard. Um, Yeah, like the, the deck's coming together. It's just like, I don't know what else they played. We don't have a list to go off of. But um, we're at 56 of 60 cards. Um, So like, I'm not sure like what other four cards we would be playing. Because we've got the... I mean, we need to play more basics, but... Because we've got 5, 9, 13, 15, 19 non-basics. So, like, we'll cut one of the triomes. Cut, a sn cut two snarls. Cut a pathway, cut a pathway. So now we're at 2, 4, 6, 9, 12, 15 lands. And this deck probably wanted to be playing 24 lands. So we need 9 more. And we could do like 3. We could go back up to 4 and then just uh, do like a 3-3-3 three, three, three split between them all. I don't know why it took it away. Don't go back. So we need to go River Glide. But like I said, uh, we're definitely going to let Kelly look at it and, and Kevy do uh, Kevy. Uh, Kelly do a little bit of it. See, like, that's the thing. They weren't playing Alrun's Epiphany or they never showed us Alrun's Epiphany. Um, I do think that that's a card you should probably be playing in all honesty. Uh, but they just weren't for whatever reason. So, like... Quandrix Apprentice, well, I just dumped the red card out of there and I don't remember its name. Um, let's see. We'll go, so we've got four there. We've got four, seven, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. So we need to cut one more land. So three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And to get to 24, we play three of each. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So that puts us back up to 57. I need to go back to the red spell. Um, but yeah, no, like, it's super hard not having a list for them that really sucks, but, like, uh, definitely gonna let Kelly take a look at it. Um, I personally think Alrun's Epiphany should be in the deck. Like, our two, like, our two top closers was, like, we're just trying to fireball you to death with that spell. I think that's what we're really trying to do, um, because we'll just get to pay two and, like, copy it all over again. So, like, get to do that. Did I not put the Quantrix commands in? I could have swore I did. Uh, it's Crackle with Power, so we'll play one Crackle with Power. Wandrix. It's not in red, but... 
Quandrix commands. We've got them in there, don't we? Yeah, no, we've got them in there. So we've got four of those. We've got two more cards. All runs. So, like, the way that the deck's looking, like, right now, so, like, these are your closers, right? Alrin's Epiphany to just take extra turns and crackle with power. Um, your counterspell lineup is four Neutralize, four Test with Talents, four Saw It Coming. Um, like, your Planeswalkers, you're playing Rowan and Kazmina. Um, you're playing four Quandrix Command and four Eureka Moment, um, four Cultivate and four Pop Quiz. Um, but that's if we ran everything as four ups, which I don't think that we're going to do because we want to make space for some other things. So, but like, this is just kind of like, I think the land base is fine. We may have to tweak it just a little bit more, but I do think the land base is fine. Um... Just because you want to have the targets for Cultivate, because you want to have, like, Cultivate go off. You want to have your Eureka moments go off. So, like, I think that's kind of where we're at there. Um, but now it's just figuring out, like, what numbers we're running everything else in. Um, Kazmina was definitely part of, their uh, like, their main combo that they were doing. Um, so we definitely want to be able to find it. And I think that three is a solid number because we don't want to see it in our hand every game. Um, our sideboard is kind of just, like, full, uh, just because we're running so many of these, like, lessons, so we may trim those up, but, like, pop quiz, I think this card's bad, this card is super bad, but, like, it was putting in work for them, um, so, like, I think it's fine, I think it's okay, um, I'll, pr we'll probably play that thing at three, uh, we'll probably play Neutralize at three. We may not even want Test of Talents main. I really don't think that we do. Um, but, you know, Test of Talents is just good. You know, like, it basically killed us when we were playing. I think Kelly came back right in time. The first game Kelly was back, like, our Cultivate got Test of Talented. That really sucked. Um, but now we're just going to iron this out. So if anyone has any kind of like cards that they think that I should play, tell me so I can look at them. That way I can be like, okay, this is something we may want to play. Because I know we want to like fireball them to death at the end. That's what we're trying to do. But like Eureka Moment, Quandrix Commands, Cultivate, Pop Quiz, the Counterspell Suite. So if anybody has anything else, please tell me. Because we're currently, if we keep Neutralize at 2, we've got 57 cards, so we need to make up three. Uh, is there a blue-green? What's the blue-green command? Or what's the blue-green ultimatum? Because if the blue-green ultimatum's good, we'll play the blue-green ultimatum. But I'm not for sure. Uh, they play Brazen Borrowers. So that puts us back up to 60. I'm trying to think. I don't think they played Vorniclex. They didn't play any, like, big green dumb stuff that we had to, like, fight through. Like, they, I think they played, like, one creature, and it was the, just the little two-drop guy. They played Kazmina. They played the Aurund. Uh, they didn't play our runs. They played the uh, Rowan. Okay, here we go. Um, decisive, de decisive denial. Three seasons. Golden ratio. We could play Coma. Coma could be cool. Um, Moret of the Forest. Probably not. We're not playing anything. Uh, Tanazir of Quandrix. Whenever it enters the battlefield, double the number of plus one, plus one counters on target creature you control. 
When it attacks, you might base power and toughness of the creatures. So we're not playing that. Um... Was there not a blue-green ultimatum? Excuse me? Pretty sure there was a blue-green ultimatum, wasn't there? Yeah, the teamer one. Is there a teamer one? I know there's like the blue uh There's like the... Soltai ultimatum, and then there's the teamer one. I think that's the one I'm thinking about is the team or one. I don't know why I've just saying, been saying blue-green. Y'all haven't know what I'm talking about. I sound like a dummy. Uh, but yeah, Genesis Ultimatum. Uh, but like, I'm trying to like figure out if there's anything else that we play in here, Panda. Panda, you got any ideas? If they would let us play Uro, we would just play Uro. Um, Gore is really bad. Body of Research is like... It. Create a zero green blue fractal token. Put X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is the number of cards in my library. It's not. It's uh It's all right. For each mana spent. To... Okay, like that seems kind of dope. Just like this large like hydra that we have. Um, their song of creation. Whoa, that's really cool. Song of Creation's kind of dope. If you want Crackle to be your finisher, you only have it at one. That's a well, so like the thing is, like they were super effective at drawing cards. Um and like we've like we're not worried about the wild cards. Like we're gonna be able to get all of this stuff. But like the thing is, is like with that being our one thing, we don't want to see like Let's say we open a hand. We don't want it to be in our hand. We want to get it whenever we need to get it. But, like, they were super efficient at it anyway. But they didn't play it. Like, they also didn't play Allrun's Epiphany. So, like, we want to at least have one. Aggro decks are going to destroy you. Yeah, that, that's what me and Kelly said. was, like, we have no way to fight against the aggro decks. We just don't. Like, they're just going to break our back. Uh, Genesis Ultimatum. Look at the top five cards. Put a permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest in your hand. Okay. I think that's cool. Um, Aluna seems okay. Hmm. I'm trying to think. So, Panda, what should I do to stop those attacks early on then? We'll put one in there just so we know what to look for. So if we just go back down here and just reselect and just look at the blue-green stuff. Like, what do we have? What are we working with? Oh, they played Symmetry Sight. No, they didn't. I don't think they played Symmetry. No, that was another deck. That was another deck. Um. See, it's really hard without a deck list, but like... The thing is, um, I think that that deck was being played, just like Kelly said, in Platinum 2 because the Sulta, the Sulta Ultimatum decks are, like, they're, like, the most represented. So, like, we could play a, a couple of removal spells. Uh, we do have um, the... Uh, we do have four, four Brazen Barware. Um, four brazen borrower. Hmm. What does green have to offer us? 
Like scorching dragon fire, you say? Okay. Dragon fire. So we've got scorching dragon fires. Um let's see. Get over into the red stuff. I don't think there's gonna be any red creatures that we're playing, so I'll just take that off and we'll go over to the green. Like it's really hard because like they're like their deck is like super slow. Like they're not doing anything, like they're countering your stuff and that's it. <sighs> Stonks. Um, I think this may be a place for J uh Jodzi to be okay. Uh, we could play Gadwick. Gadwick's cool. Um. I'm just brainstorming, like, right now. Like, I. I'm, like, I just don't want to get blown out by the aggro decks, is really it. Like, I just don't want to, I don't want to auto lose to those. Um, the Burrowers, Draconic Interventions, use Gold Span Dragon as a finisher, Magma Opus as your killer. Sprite Dragon, Snake Skin Veil, the Burrowers, Draconic Interventions. I know me and Kelly want to try the convo the control version. And if it doesn't work, we could slot it into something else. But, like, probably in their sideboard, they got a lot of stuff for, like, the aggro matchup. But, like, they just had our number in game one. I think, like, that deck was specifically built to counter the Sultai mirrors or the Sultai decks. Um, so like, uh, like I was mentioning earlier, like we're definitely gonna have to let Kelly put his little spin on it since he's not here. Um, but I do want to throw some stuff in here for Kelly to look out to be like, okay, well, that's something we can play. So if we go back and we look at it again, um, we've got the four scorching dragon fires is like removal. Um, we're playing like a Gadwick. We'll look at our creature count. Like it's pretty small, but like. Jazdi's really cool. So, like, the reason why I thought about Jazdi putting it in here, um, because, like, worst comes to worst, like, whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a non-land card, you may cast it by paying one rather than paying its mana cost. If it's a land card, put it onto the battlefield. Well, that allows us to cast anything in here for one. This may be the deck for Josty. Um, the reason why I put Gadwick in here is because like Gadwick's just three and X. Like if we're getting super like on turn four, he just draws us a card for three three. I think that's fine. But like the longer the game goes on, the better he gets. So like playing him, like they were playing pop quiz and they would just go and search like the pest summoning, the environmental sciences, the mascot exhibitions. Like, they're playing that kind of thing. So they have ways to just kind of, like, stun. But you have to get to turn three and turn four to use them. Uh, Eureka Moment. Uh, ramping Quandrix. Um, it's basically, like, Brazen Borrower. Um, and we're putting three cards back to reuse. So, like, another reason why we're only playing one Crackle with Power is because Quandrix Command can just shuffle it back in. Uh, we're going to be able to, like, if we mill it or something, we're going to be able to use it again. Same with Genesis Ultimatum. We can just shuffle it back in because Quantrix Command lets us recycle this stuff. Um, so we're at 68 cards. I do think, like, we're on the right track for what this deck was wanting to do against us. But, like, it's like, what do we cut and what do we play? 
that's the big thing. We do want to have efficient mana. So we don't want to play too many triums that come in tap. We just don't. Uh, it's this is tough, man. This is tough. But let's let's go look at what some of the stuff that Panda was talking about. Sprite. Well, I need to get off the deck stuff first, but Sprite. Uh, we've got Sprite Dragon, uh, Flying Haste. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a plus one, plus one on it. It's super good. So I'll just put one of in here to talk uh, about it with Kelly. Uh, you wanted Snake Skin. If I could type. Snake Skin Veil. Um, you wanted The Burrowers. Kelly, yeah, no, look. Kelly, I need your help. Um, this is kind of what we're looking at. Like, we're... Get the sideboard out of my face. Um, Panda mentioned something like playing snakeskin veils and sprite dragons. Um, so, like, this is the stuff that Panda was talking about. Uh, I've got us four, uh, so... Panda was talking about, uh, like, we just don't want to die to aggro decks, essentially. Um, so, like, we're just brainstorming cards to put in there so we don't lose to those. Um, but I do have, like, the four main deck test of talents, two neutralize, four saw it coming. Um, I threw in a, a, a Jadzi and a Gadwick just because we don't know what all was in their deck because we don't have um, a list for them. But I did get, like, three Pop Quiz, four Brazen Borrower, full Cultivate, um, four Quandrix Command, four Eureka Moment, um, two Alrin's Epiphany, because we saw that they weren't playing it when they should have been playing it. Um, a Genesis Ultimatum, just because, like, it just puts cards into our hand. Um, put any number of permanent cards from among them from uh, onto the battlefield and the rest in your hand. Um, so it can, like, put certain things onto the battlefield. It's not going to come up very often, but, like, it's just a thought if we need to go somewhere like that. Uh, crackle with power, because we saw how big they ramped, and we could have been dead if they just had a crackle with power at any point. Um, and then Rowan and Kazmina. And then the land base. So now we're just looking, like, how do we finish up the deck? Uh, what is that card, Kelly? One. Oh, it doesn't accept that as text. Improbable Alliance. That's what it is. Uh, not collected. Okay. Improbable Alliance. Yeah, this guy. This guy right here. Yeah, improbable alliance. So we've got four improbable alliance. It's another way to like not to die to the aggro decks. We'll just make chump blockers because we're drawn on our turn and our opponent and our opponent's turn. So like, like I don't I remember it vividly because like it's just been stuck in my brain. Like we didn't get to do anything. Like they were untapping with so much mana anyway. Like that was it. Like we were. We just weren't doing anything. Like, they had the counter spells. They have tested the talents. They had stuff foretold. We already knew what it was. Um, but, like, they just won for one you to death. Um, but, no, like, I've been throwing in some of the stuff that Panda was talking about here. Um, no, you can help. No, you're... I am so passive. You're 100%. I'm so passive. Just because I am a control player. So, like, I do have your stuff in there. Uh, it is something that, like, I thought the Scorching Dragonfire was great, uh, but I don't know much about Strike Sprite Dragon and Snakeskin Veil. Like, I had just haven't played aggressive stuff, but you are a help panda. Don't don't think that you're not. Um, you said something was called the Burrowers, panda. What is that card called?
Oh, Brazen Borrower. Yeah, no, we've got the borrowers in here, right here. Right there. Uh, I know that they played them. <sighs> we have to go ahead and get it in here for Kelly. Where's it at? Kelly, we're going to slap you some midnight clocks in here because we know you, you know, you hate losing to the, to the boys, the rogues. But see, like, Quandrick's command works with that. Quandrick allows you to just shuffle stuff back into your library. They've done that multiple times. So, like, even though we're playing one crackle with power, we can just Quandrick's command it back into our deck. So, like, we have essentially multiple copies of it. And you can Quandrick's command put another Quandrick's command back in your library so you can technically have infinite copies. Uh, I just started playing Magic a week ago, and I'm trying to watch some of these people play, and I spend the whole time trying to figure out why they are doing stuff. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, most Magic players don't know why they do stuff. They just do it. Um, and that's true for Magic players. And as for Yu-Gi-Oh players, like our boy JT, they can't read. I can't read either, so it is what it is. But uh, that's kind of where we're at, Kelly. You know, we've we've got you your midnight clocks in here. We'll set it in its own little row for you, Kelly. Um, but no, we just need you to get a hold of this um, and just kind of go through it, uh, put your own spin on some stuff. Yeah, it just takes time. It's one of those things that just takes time. I really think Genesis Ultimatum, like Genesis Ultimatum puts midnight clock into play. Genesis made Ultimatum also puts JazD into play for free. Uh, puts Gadwick into play, just makes him a 3-3. Puts Brazen Borrowers into play. It puts Improbable Alliance into play. So, like, the more time, the more we put permanents into the deck, the better Genesis Ultimatum gets. So, does this just become a Genesis Ultimatum deck? I don't know. But if we wanted to do, like, the combo with Kazmina and Rowan, we can. So, we can just be a team or control deck that just wins off of Genesis Ultimatum and Crackle with Power. King Gamut, uh, that deck is really good. I think we actually have that deck in here somewhere, the Is It Dragons. Um, as Panda pointed out to me earlier, I would definitely recommend playing Sprite Dragon. Sprite Dragon's insane. But, like, that's what I'm saying, Panda, is, like, it puts Improbable Alliance into play. It puts Gadwick and Jazdy into play. It puts Midnight Clock into play. It puts Kazmi, uh, Kazmina and Rowan into play. The more we play permanents, the better Genesis Ultimatum gets. It can Ultimatum out Vorniclex. There are two Ultimatums that can put Vorniclex into play. One of them, your opponent doesn't get to choose. You just get to put them into play. Um... If there were better blue, green, and red, like you can play, yeah, the Goldspan Dragons, Galazeth. We could play those in this deck. We could just be like Teamer Dragons. But see, that's what I don't know, Panda. It's like, I don't know what Kelly wants to do, how Kelly wants to do it. Uh, no, I'm like, we're not, like, this isn't set in stone. We're just brainstorming what the deck would do. So we've got three different ways that we could take it. You have the control deck. Kelly, no, it does matter to you. Don't you say that. Uh, we can play like the pure control version, which I think is what we should play. Uh, yeah, we just got completely stomped by the control variant. That's why I want to play the control variant so bad. But the other thing is we don't have a list for that deck. We just don't. So we're going into this blind. So that's why I'm talking about so much and doing so much stuff is because like I'm super excited. And I just don't know what that deck was playing. Panda thinks the aggro variant is better. I think the control variant's better. Like, the control variant, I think 100% wins against Solta Ultimatum. Like, it just beats the Ultimatum decks. And if that's what we're seeing a lot in Platinum, I think that's the way to take it. But the moment we start seeing aggro, we're done. Get out of there, we're going back to bronze. So I think what we need to do is just have a plan built up of an aggro variant and a control variant and we can run them, like, control variant one week, keep a tally of, like, how we went that week, and then the next one, run the uh, the aggro variant, and see, like, yeah. 
We already have the Bone Crushers, the Galazeth, the Goldspan, so we can run both. We can do them both. So Panda, if you want to see the aggro variant, we'll do it. But we also do want to play the control version. So we will play both versions of this Panda. Panda, build us a version. Like, send us a list of what you would play, how you would play this deck, and we'll build it. How's that? We'll build a control version, and you can build the aggro version. Send us the aggro one so we have a list to work off of. That sounds like a plan. I think we... Stop it. No, don't do that. We'll just lose. We'll just auto-fold. But yeah, no, we can do that too. You can take your aggro and play against our control. And then... <laughs> Kelly will build an 80-card control uh, jank variant using Yorion, so. Which may be the best way to play the Genesis Ultimatum. I'm not lying. Uh, because Yorion can just, like, blink the stuff, and then Ultimatum can just put stuff onto the battlefield. So, like, Omen of the Sea and all these other just, like, good cards, like, Genesis Ultimatum can just put them into play. Seems kind of dope. But no, I think that's kind of where we're at. Um, we do have the buildings, like the 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 backbone for what this deck is. And I think it's just about shifting it one way or the other. So Panda? No, Panda, you're fine. Just build us a list. Like if you send a list to us, we'll build it. Uh, how many wild cards are we off for this build? Uh, I don't know because I've got so much stuff in here. Um, but like, if we remove these, remove these, take this out, take this out, take this out, uh, take this out, we are one, two, see, like, it doesn't show us how many they've got. Uh, there we go. So we are two, five, six, Seven, eight. We are eight wild cards off. Um, one, two, two mythic, and one, two, three, six rare. So two mythic and six rare. But no, see, that's the other thing, is there are ways to grind, and like there are ways to grind and make sure that you get enough coins to buy packs. And bust those for wild cards. And I, me and Kelly covered it once on stream. And there is something in the works for it. Um, a tutorial video on how to go over it. Whether there is something in the works. Um, about covering over how to go through and make the most out of Arena. Without putting money into it. And the best way to do that is. Save up your gold. Save up your gems. Uh, grind uh, grind the, the standard events. Um, I think in the video, uh, in the stream that we done, like we took the red, white knights deck and made our money back off the pre-con deck that wizards gave us in the standard event. So like the standard event is such a good way to both test out your deck and grind for the wild cards and the rares and the uncommons and stuff that they give you. It's super, super easy. Then doing your daily challenges, completing those for your gems and for your coins is super, super good. And if you have the battle pass, twice as much. But we're talking about how to do it without putting money into it. So just making sure you do all your daily stuff. Um, making sure you get the wins that you need. Um, just grinding that stuff out is the best way. And so like Panda, you said you have 40k gold and 7k gems. You can just take all that gold, buy packs, crack them, possibly pull the stuff you want. And then, you know, for each pack that you crack, every five is a rare wild card. So you're just able to crack all these wild cards, and boom, you're just building decks. Not to mention, if you have gems, yeah, you, you're you saving the gold for drafting for the next set. I don't blame you. Next set's going to be dope. Um, the uh, for, uh, It's something of Forgotten Realms, the D&D. The D and D set's gonna be super insane, and I can't wait. Drafting is how you get wild cards. I mean, you can also get wild cards by busting the packs. I I know you can do that, um, but no, I think this is where we're at. Uh, would you like to save and exit anyway? Yes. Um, so we need to. It's a four color deck. 
So we're going to name this Teamer CNTR. No. Teamer Control. Um, so I think that's where we want to be. I think that's where we're at. Um, but yeah, no. Um, guys, it's reaching that time. So, uh, you know, I just want to go ahead and say, you know, we've got some stuff coming up uh, later on tonight. We have, uh, I think there's somebody in here who actually wanted to say what's going on tomorrow or tonight, actually. Yeah. Okay. Now he's coming. Drew's got something he wants to tell you about. So I'll get out of the way because this is going to be rough. Yeah. JT, you all love me for doing this every time. The Yu-Gi-Oh! Super Show! There you go, guys. Love you. There's that. Um, but no, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Super Show coming up tonight with JT. I do believe he has a special guest. I wonder who that could be. Um, yeah, at least we didn't peek this time. Uh, no, we've got the Yu-Gi-Oh! Super Show. Um, is this week the D&D stuff, or is that... So we've got D and D this week. Uh, you've got C and H collectibles at five. Uh, you've got D and D at six. Um, then coming up on Monday, you have the wrestling show. Kelly, you have to work this weekend. You sad man. Um, so like then like the week's just gonna repeat it over. So that means the wrestling show, the um, the standard show with me and Kelly. Uh, where I think we're going to be playing this this control variant. Um, but no, listen, guys, if you guys haven't already uh, jumped in our Discord, please do. That's where uh, a lot of us reach out to each other. We talk about mail days. We talk about stuff coming up. We just joke around, post memes. Memes are being co posted constantly. I think Kelly said he didn't want to do something on the zip line today, so we were talking about zip lines uh, for whatever reason. Um, you know, Mark feeds us with an infinite supply of of memes um so yeah no jumping into the discord is one of the best ways to stay connected with us uh who's ready to ride of a zipline kelly is kelly is ready to ride the zipline but staying in the discord keeps you connected with all of us um another thing if you haven't went to troll and toad yet please do we've got all kinds of awesome products on there we've got cards we've got everything that you would want to build this deck build other decks you know i think typing nonsense was talking about how um they finished out a uh commander deck and just bought a lot of stuff there so going uh going on trolling toads you can get the stuff that you'd see on the collectible stream the uh happy little orc streams the Yu Gi Oh streams the D, D streams so almost everything that we do is connected in some way we should have that stuff we'll you'll be able to get that stuff the video game streams even uh i know you all uh really liked watching uh them play halo i heard drew was bragging about how like he just obliterated ben that was really funny <laughs> um but no yeah we've got all kinds of great stuff on there and we just really appreciate it uh, uh, for you all sticking around, doing all that you do for us, keeping us here, and making sure that you all tell us and uh, about the content that we're making. We love to hear your feedback. So we really do appreciate you guys from the bottom of our hearts. So I do think that that's all I've got for you. So I think I'm just going to let the ad roll, and I'll see you all later. <laughs>